Hi everyone, it's Friday, September 6th. Uh, this is Liam McMahon with the Daily Moving Average video. Uh, it is 11.08 a.m. on the East Coast. It's 7.08 a.m. where I'm currently located. Um, good morning. Uh, happy Non-Farm Payrolls Friday. Um, we had a slightly disappointing Non-Farm Payrolls print today. All right, 182 was the expectation, 169 was the actual number. Um, nothing tragic. Uh, dollar sold off initially, then that faded. Now we'll kind of see where it's going from there. Um, the only uh, major concern that I see out of this non-farm payrolls report uh, is the participation rate, uh, which is the number of people that are... Uh, in the are considered looking for a job or in the active workforce. Uh, that's how we measured the unemployment rate. All right, it's not how many people don't have a job out of the entire country. It's how many people don't have a job out of the people who are actively trying to have a job. All right, so we don't count retired people. Um, we don't count stay-at-home moms and stay-at-home dads. We don't count um, students like you know who aren't looking for a job. Uh, so the unemployment rate dropped, all right, um, by a tenth of a percent unexpectedly. The reason it dropped is the participation rate fell, uh, to the lowest it's been since the seventies. Generally speaking, a low participation rate suggests discouragement in the labor force, um, and, and generally a lack of jobs. Um, considering we've seen positive non-farm payrolls reports over the last several months, all right, slightly disappointing, but don't forget we've still created over 160,000 jobs this month, less path month, um, the participation rate dropping suggests that it may be more of an attitude problem than it, than uh, the a reality of the supply problem, um, and I'm not sure that there's anything the Fed can really do to um, deal with an attitude problem in terms of their taper. Uh, so I don't think this report, uh, despite the disappointing participation rate and the slightly disappointing uh, um, headline number, I don't think this, uh, report is going to do anything to delay whatever tapering may have been scheduled to occur in September. All right. So I don't think that puts that off the table. I don't think what we've, uh, seen a definite delay. Uh, so the, we're going into the fed meeting with the same anticipations I think we had, uh, before this report. All right, let's gonna go. Let's go take a look at a couple charts. Please take a moment to read over the risk disclaimer, which should now be on your screen. Uh, and then we'll run through some decent setups that uh, may be appearing for next week. All right, all right, all right. So let's go to daily chart. Let's take a look at dollar yen. Dollar yen was the chart of the day <laughs> yesterday. This is basically exactly what I suggested we may do. All right, uh, said look for a on a bad non-farm payrolls. Look to buy uh, dollar yen at the 50-day EMA, which is 98.48. Our low is 98.53. All right, I was off by five pips. I can't get much better than that um, in terms of, of precision. Uh, we are now bouncing. The question is whether or not we'll continue to bounce. All right, we've had a decent reaction off of that triangle retest, off of this 200-period EMA on the 4-hour chart, and off of the 50-day. All right, so this triangle, obviously huge targets, all right? Um, if this is indeed uh, going to play out how it is, uh, how the measure move is supposed to, Basically, you measure the wide side of the triangle, all right, and project it from the breakout. It won't even let me do it on the forward chart. Hold on. Let's go back to the daily chart. It's hoping to let me do it here. It's, I mean, it projects new highs above 106. All right, I'm not completely convinced that we'll get all the way up there. All right, just shy of 108, actually, is the projected target. Um... Significant risk offflows will uh, make that a little bit more challenging, but uh, that is the projected target. I do like dollar yen for longs um, going forward. Definitely a uh, trade you should keep your eye on if you didn't get it uh, from the chart, chart of the day yesterday. E minis, all right, positive reaction here so far to the data, up about three tenths of a point, or sorry, three tenths of a percent, five to six points. Um, Major resistance, 1675. Major support, about 1640. Um, just keep your eye on those levels. In between there, it's kind of hard to judge um, what we're doing. Above 1675, we should start to see uh, 
shorts get sucked up higher uh, and really pounded, should break new highs. Uh, on the other hand, below 1625 uh, or so, all right, and longs are going to start to bail until about 1575, which is the 200 day EMA. All right, euro dollar, this is another chart I posted this morning. I right, projected euro dollar possibility uh, rejection off of a uh, bounce off of negative non farm payrolls and then a rejection um, off these horizontal resistance levels. Uh, this one not uh, is playing out so well necessarily. All right, we got the, re the rally and the rejection, then we re rallied. Now we've kind of started to reject again. Um, euro dollar is a tough one here. Uh, one thing I will be looking for next week. Though, all right, very possible that we now have this sort of descending wedge type channel type expanding pattern. Uh, most of you probably by now know I hate expanding patterns. I find them irritating to trade. Uh, but if it makes you feel better, we can just eliminate this bottom line, all right, uh, and trade this um, breakout higher. The one thing that makes me nervous right here, bearish moving average crossover 50 below the 200. That's the so-called death cross. It's on the four hour chart, not the daily chart. But it tends to have a pretty solid uh, impact. Definitely something to be wary about. Those resistance levels, 132.12 and 132.44, uh, they should cap euro pretty well. I would be a little bit cautious about it being aggressively long the euro dollar uh, until at least we clear this 50 period EMA here. That's 132.12. Uh, above there, we might be able to start. Uh, basing for another move higher. Uh, but until that point, it seems like shorts have the edge on the euro. Aussie, on the other hand, all right, looks like the bulls are in control. Um, nice uh, four-hour break of this uh, first head and shoulder, inverse head and shoulders neckline. All right, we broke, we hold. Next stop is uh, 93. 93 is significant, though. That is a major, major support level. I really can't emphasize enough how important the range between 93 and 93.50 is. Um, those, if we get above 93.50, same deals with ES uh, here uh, on the intraday. We will start to see uh, shorts bail and get sucked higher. All right, we'll start to hit some stops as we break these previous highs or this rally high. Uh, and it looks like 97 would be the next stop, this 200 day EMA. You can see we battled. All right, we got back above the 50. Uh, so, really, Aussie setting up for what could be a pretty good move higher with the way the euro looks. That means we have to look at Euro Aussie and think that we're heading lower 135 200 day ema not unachievable potential double top broke the neckline of the double top all right i mean keep your eye on euro aussie here we could start to see a pretty aggressive sell-off start in euro aussie problem right now is we're at 143.16 if you wanted to short it here your stop would need to be about 145 so about a 200 pip stop Probably, hopefully, not something that you do regularly. So keep your eye out for potential uh, retracements, consolidations, and maybe look for Euro Aussie shorts. Kiwi dollar. All right, same deal 80, 80, 200 day EMA, and then 81 range highs. Those are the resistance levels. They've been the resistance levels. We've rallied very well on this pair, uh, but I would not be looking to join this move now. Uh, rather, I'll be hoping for another 90 or so pips higher, and then I might start looking to fade it. Pound dollar. Okay. Breakout here, maybe continuing higher, looking for about 160.34. Uh, another one that you want to be cautious about. Next major level here, 157.48. Dollar CAD, 104, key support. All right, we're approaching it. Below there, 102.41 is the big, big, big support level. Uh, that's a major ascending trend line and the 200-day EMA. 102.41 uh, is a huge area for a bounce. If we get there, I have to start liking longs uh, pretty aggressively at that level. Euro Yen. Okay, holding still um, this descending trend line just phenomenally. Um, wish I'd been sort of paying better attention to that. Um, but now we're approaching support level, so keep your eye on uh, Euro Yen here for a breakout or bounce off of support. It's going to be an interesting fight between Dollar Yen and Euro Dollar to see which way Euro Yen gets driven. Let's do Kiwi Yen. Uh, let's do Pound Kiwi. Kiwi Yen, very similar to Euro Yen. Pound Kiwi, okay, bouncing hard off the 50-day. Potential double top here at 2. 
Double top neckline is down here around 1.9. Big pattern. Uh, I'm not keen on trading pound kiwi when it's like this. I mean, this it's just really aggressively moving in a range here. Um, 